2016, Makoto Koike, an engineer, moved to Shizuoka Prefecture to be with his parents, who are cucumber farmers. He was concerned that his mother was spending an inordinate amount of time sorting cucumbers in her farm. Look, the Japanese market for cucumbers is a sophisticated one, and cucumbers come in nine different varieties based on the color, length, texture, etc. And because cucumber is a seasonal crop. His mother was unable to hire and train temporary workers just in time every year for the sorting process. So Makoto decided to build an AI system to automate this process. This is the system he built. As cucumbers come through the lot, a camera takes a picture of every cucumber. This picture is then processed by a deep learning algorithm, and the right category of the cucumber is identified. And the next and final step. A Raspberry Pi 3 based computer controls and nudges the cucumber into the appropriate bin. This system worked with 70% accuracy in the first pass, and this made his mother very happy. For over 2,000 years, human beings have been attempting to build intelligent machines. But only in the last 20 years, we've seen this intelligence explosion a slew of intelligent products, recommendations powering our every decision. Real time language translations, autonomous trucks, cars, smarter phones, and on and on. This has largely been because of a significant shift in our thinking. We have moved from the good old fashioned AI idea of instructing computers on what to do with elaborate rules, exceptions, exceptions to the exceptions, to a very different way of thinking. In this new way of thinking, We are teaching machines on how to perceive and process the environment, plan, predict, and make decisions, and most importantly, learn from experience. The system that Makoto built is also a microcosm of all things exciting within the world of AI. In fact, AI systems are now matching or exceeding human performance in a number of narrow application areas. And when the AI systems work well, They unobtrusively disappear into the background, letting humans do and accomplish what they are trying to do as naturally as possible. What is the secret behind these great AI technologies that we are experiencing? The mathematicians and computer scientists in this room will instantly answer data and algorithms. And indeed, algorithms are powering our lives. The recent advances in algorithms, especially in the areas of deep learning, have revolutionized several industries. Including healthcare, technology, e commerce, logistics, financial services, and so on. But there's more to getting AI right inside big successful companies than most people realize. Let me give you a sneak peek into how successful companies are driving great AI success in their organizations. There are three equations, let's call them pseudo equations, that you need to know. When organizations get these equations right, AI systems just work. And when they don't, there are catastrophic failures. The first of our three equations is relatively straightforward and is related to error in AI algorithms. In April 2010, Apple acquired Siri. And in October 2011, Apple unveiled Siri with great fanfare as an integrated feature of the Apple iPhone 4S. In the initial days, Siri's performance was comically bad, and several users started reporting serious problems with Siri's ability to understand accents, questions, and even user intent. The error rates were unacceptably high. In four short years, everything changed, and adoption took off. The error rates dropped. In fact, in 2016, Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google, reported. That more than 20% of all searches were now voice searches. The secret behind this dramatic reduction error delivers our first equation. The error in AI systems reduces directly with more data, increased compute, and improved techniques. The cost of collecting, storing, and processing data has been falling exponentially, following what is called as Moore's law. The cost of computing has been following a similar trend as well. Companies such as OpenAI took great advantage of these trends and famously trained a much larger model with almost 175 billion parameters 
for the GPT-3 launch in 2019. In 2020, Google announced a 1 trillion parameter model. Despite these significant drop in costs, these models are still expensive to train, with estimates of 5 to 10 million dollars spent in just training these AI models. This hasn't deterred big tech companies who see value in reduced error. The benefit of greater accuracy and much higher adoption at scale outweighs these costs. So, that's our first equation. Error is proportional to the multiplicative effects of data, computing horsepower, and sophistication in techniques. Let's move to a second equation. In 2015, as I stepped into my 40s, my midlife crisis led me to reconsider the purpose of my life. My father passed away when I was 24 because the doctors couldn't diagnose his pneumonia condition on an x-ray before it was too late. This exploration eventually led to the creation of Cure.ai, a healthcare imaging AI startup to assist radiologists and other doctors in making better diagnostic decisions. Every year, more than a billion x-rays are produced for various healthcare diagnostic reasons. Imaging has been expanding at a vastly faster pace than the number of people who can read these images. This means asking doctors to be even more productive and don't even think what that's going to do to their handwriting. The result? A large fraction of x-rays are never reported. Doctors spend insufficient time on the ones they do see and frequently miss important findings. We built an AI system that could read an x-ray image and report up to 30 different abnormalities. Our intention was that this report could be a pre-read for a doctor. Surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, doctors weren't too excited with the idea of assistance from an AI algorithm. And this, despite several peer-reviewed and published research studies establishing that these algorithms outperformed an average radiologist comfortably and even matched top radiologists. Eventually, our breakthrough came when we applied the chest x-ray AI system to the problem of tuberculosis. TB is one of the most infectious diseases in the world and a significant contributor to mortality in several emerging countries. In Philippines, we found several TB detection programs that involved sending mobile screening vans across the country to identify people with TB and put them on a treatment plan at the earliest. Unfortunately, these vans aren't equipped with radiologists and this meant it was taking several weeks after an x-ray for a patient to be identified as a TB patient. This inevitably meant more patients lost to follow up. Now enabled with Cure's AI system, patients can be diagnosed, identified within minutes of their x-ray scan and put on a treatment plan the very same day. We experienced a similar breakthrough in early detection of lung cancer, which is particularly lethal when detected late. Now, what drove the initial failure and the subsequent success of Cure.ai? This sets up our second equation. Great AI problem solving involves a user-centric, decisions-backward approach rather than a technology-centric, data-forwards approach. Our success came when we truly understood our users and their need in driving better TB outcomes in different parts of the world. A significant number of AI failures can be explained by the approach akin to, I have great data, what can I do with it? Successful AI problem solving relies on great algorithms, most certainly, but even more so on great design and impeccable engineering. We have already seen the impact of user-focused decision backwards design. But making Cure.ai algorithms work in remote parts of the world, even without an internet connection, and delivering diagnostic results in under a minute involved significant engineering challenges as well. In fact, in 2015, researchers from Google published a paper titled Hidden Technical Debt in Machine Learning Systems, which illustrated the growing importance of engineering in AI systems. So, there you have it, the second equation. AI results are proportional to smart algorithms, but even more so to great engineering and good design. Now, we are down to our last equation. How do organizations succeed with AI? In his book, Genius Makers, Cade Metz 
talks about how Jeffrey Hinton decided the company he was going to join in 2011. Around this time, Google had recognized the growing importance of AI and had decided to approach Jeffrey Hinton, one of the most important AI luminaries of our time, to join Google. The only tricky part was establishing the right price for the value of Jeffrey Hinton's talent. Jeffrey Hinton set up DNN research for this purpose, and several companies, including Microsoft, Baidu, Google, participated in an auction for price discovery. When the price reached $44 million, Hinton decided to stop this auction and announced his intention to join Google. Over the next many years, this gave Google a decisive advantage in establishing AI superiority. Our third equation defines organizational effectiveness with AI as a function of talent, culture, and governance. Great AI companies realize that great talent is significantly more productive than average talent. This is common in professional sports where the top player gets paid five to seven times an average player. In the high-tech AI world, half-life of knowledge is very short. And so top talent that can adapt and adopt these new methods and techniques can significantly outperform average talent. Once you have top talent, you also need to create a great work environment that lets these talented teams do their best work without any interference and what I call a positive error culture. At Amazon, when the Fire Phone project failed spectacularly, Jeff Bezos did not flinch for a minute and put the team that was behind this into creating their next big AI success, the Amazon Echo. The last and final part of our equation is surprisingly the most ignored. Great AI is greatly powerful, and making sure that AI is safe, human-centered, and ethical is a final ingredient in driving organizational effectiveness with AI. Organizations that can combine talent, culture, and governance not only drive great AI success inside their companies, but for the world at large. AI is one of the most powerful general purpose technologies that the world has seen in the last 100 years. If Makoto could use AI to make his life and the life of his mother just a little bit better with AI, imagine what organizations, not just the big tech companies, but the small ones, the medium ones, can do with AI. Big and small companies can use these three equations to serve customers better, build great products, improve operational effectiveness, and make our world a much better place, and hopefully in our lifetimes. Thank you.